Welcome back to the Football Fitness Federation podcast. This is episode 232. I'm delighted to be joined on the podcast today by Ed Gibbons. Ed, how's things? I'm doing well, thanks Ben. How are you? Yeah, very good. I'm very good, thank you. Excited for this podcast. I know we've, we're going to be educating people around wellness, mental wellness, um, well-being, and so we're going to dive into that in a little bit. But I wanted to start the this podcast, as we do all the others, and find out a little bit about yourself to start with. So we'll go into rewiring a little bit, which is the company that we're going to talk around. Um, but what about yourself, Ed? Where did you start? What's led up to your role? Yeah, um, so really been a lifelong athlete. Um, grew up playing a lot of uh, a lot of rugby, um, and now training as sort of a hybrid athlete. But my sort of beginnings are in rugby, um, and you know, it was a big part of my my childhood growing up. Uh, really, probably where I found myself, um, and uh, yeah, big part of everything I did. But uh, when I was about thirteen, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes, and. Obviously, when you're young playing rugby, that's a bit of a big hit. It has a massive impact on your um, performance and you just got to get things under control in the right way. And ultimately, that created this sort of passion around sports science. You know, I started delving into how can I manage my you know, blood sugars in the best way for performance. And uh, once you sort of optimize that, it kind of, you get really in tune with your physiology firstly, but also develop a real interest behind sports science. Um, so that was, uh, you know, the first protocol and really dug into every aspect across, you know, training, nutrition, recovery, how could I get myself in the best state possible to perform? Um, but there felt like this kind of untapped area, which was, uh, the mental aspect, um, definitely an aspect that I struggled with in particular and put in a lot of work to try and get it under control. Um, you know, there were moments where you just kind of lost it during a game, not in a sort of aggressive way, but just lost that kind of focus, lost that, um, lost that mental piece. Um, and yeah, just felt like an incredibly untapped area. So I kind of had this uh, lifelong love for sports, a lifelong love for sports science. Uh, and then on the side, sort of a love for technology as well. Um, ultimately got to go to Loughborough University uh, to study sports science and sort of further that passion. Um, it's kind of like one of the homes of sport, especially in the UK. Uh, I think they say if it was a, a country, it would be 15th for the Olympics, which is above sort of Germany, South Africa and the like. So, you know, this small 20, 30,000 person town is uh, a huge, uh, huge sports area. Uh, a great place to be if you love sports. But ultimately, I just even further my passion. Um, and then... Uh, yes, I had these three passions going, sports, sports science and technology and uh, met my co-founder, son and Cody, and we, we got building it. They had a passion for the same aspect, the mental piece, which just felt incredibly untapped. And yeah, we got building a product that basically supports athletes' mental resilience and builds that and also supports their mental well-being, um, which is essentially an area that every athlete and coach knows is a super important part of the game. Um, but is often overlooked, and we want to provide the tools to really support that. So, was that that sort of idea and design process? Did that start straight from university or during university time? Yeah, exactly. Um, during, and we um, that's when I uh, uh, met Sun and Cody. Had literally the same idea. We're uh, you know, uh, I don't know, thousands of miles away there, and they're in the states. I'm in in the UK here. Um, but, uh, you know, somehow found each other online and we got building it together. Um, kind of came from a few different angles. Um, Cody from an engineering background, some from a, from a product background, and maybe this background in sports science um, and, and also products. And um, yeah, got building it together. And what was the initial plan for you going into university, studying sports science? Was it just to gain knowledge or did you have, um, but you mentioned about rugby. Did you have ambitions of going working in rugby or different sports? Yeah, I think when I came to uni, my um, plan was kind of professional sports, working professional sports as a practitioner. Ultimately, as I, you know, got building stuff, I, I realised I had this huge, um, you know, passion for just building products, building business. Um, it's something that was a big part of my childhood growing up as well. I was always pretty entrepreneurial. 
uh, was, you know, running a car wash, hiring people down my road, not necessarily in the sports science space, but um, again, just passions colliding. Um, but yeah, my, you know, as I was at university, my kind of next steps turned from, you know, probably working in professional sports, or at least that's, that was the aim to um, more wanting to build technology to support uh, um, athletes. And did that degree come with aspects of experience at, at clubs in sports or anything like that? Uh, not so much. We kind of, um, I did a little bit of work with um, uh, like the, the teams on, on, on campus. So, uh, you know, I was coaching the, the rugby team, the women's rugby team um, in particular. And uh yeah, that, that was obviously super helpful for kind of just refining what it's like to work with uh, teams. I've done a little bit um, before then as well. Um, but yeah, not a ton of sort of external professional clubs. Um, kind of by that point, I'd, I'd really focused on on building Ruby Wire. Uh, but um, yeah, definitely having that sort of exposure uh, to the sort of women's rugby team, which plays a, play, actually plays at a professional level, was um, pretty awesome. So you, you talked about where the initial early ideas came from. Can you give us a little bit of an idea on the next phases of that and what eventually led to Rewire Fitness? Yeah, so the first point of call was um, based on uh, science that originates in 2009, which is around um, mental fatigue limiting athletic performance. It's something we all sort of inherently know. Uh, you know, if you try work out after a hard day's work, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot harder, and you're not gonna be able to perform at the highest level that you're capable of. Um, uh, but this sort of science and research proved that. Uh, study done by Mark Cora, and then that was furthered by a 2015 study um, done by Sarano, looking at um, how we could actually train our, our tolerance to mental fatigue using a protocol called brain endurance training. And that essentially targets the brain responsible for mental uh, tolerance of mental fatigue, uh, which is known as the anterior cingulate cortex. Um, and they saw really exciting results in the lab. Um, you know, over a 12-week period, athletes using this kind of training were tripling their time to exhaustion when tripling the improvement in time to exhaustion when compared to control groups. So really significant improvements um, when you know when compared to not using it. And it just shows sort of how untap the mental pieces and when you put a little bit of focus on it, it makes a huge difference um so yeah that that sort of science originated in 2009 further than 2015 but never came to market um um we sort of found a way to build this um into a platform um that originally combined both software and hardware now we've allowed uh sort of software only but you can sort of have a hardware add-on too uh so that was the first piece of brain endurance strength system that was very accessible uh, for athletes and could also be combined with physical training um that kind of covered long-term training how can we you know train our minds to be more strong in the long term but there's also this acknowledgement that mental fatigue is going to exist in some capacity stress is going to exist in some capacity these kind of acute stresses uh frustration um like all these aspects that affect an athlete day to day still occur despite us training the mind to ultimately be more foreign. So we wanted to create both a long-term and short-term solution that combines. And that's when we built a mindset recovery system. And that basically combines protocols from neuroscience and psychology targeted at supporting the athlete for the whole 24 hours. So we'll bring together the right protocols in a two to four minute session that will help them reduce their stress, prepare for a workout, unwind after a training day, um, focus if they're doing work on the side or, or uh, studies on the side, um, even help them get a good night's sleep, like literally built around the entire sort of 24 hours of an athlete day, quick sessions to support that. And then, so that kind of covers off a long-term piece and a short-term piece, but having a tool that would allow us to monitor the athlete's state see where they're at and then provide, you know, what's the right situation, what's the right solution. Um, you know, context is key. If we can know what solution is right for you and just give that to you on a platter, that's a really, uh, it's, you know, one of the ways we can get the most benefit out of um, uh, the system. So we built a monitoring system at its core that tracks your cognitive 
physical and emotional readiness state each day. Um, you know, as we think of the sort of current readiness trackers on the market, they're focused on the physical piece. They're tracking heart rate variability, resting heart rate, sleep, but they're not looking at the cognitive and emotional piece, which we know to be so important. So having that as part of our system, making it super holistic has been, um, you know, a way we've been able to really uh, show what makes, the, uh, you know, what is the right solution for the athlete on a given day. So we can pick it out, you know, they're under a lot of emotional fatigue and give them the right protocols to help them prepare for that game later that day, whatever it might be. Just going on to the athlete side, I know you've sort of referenced mm-hmm. this a little bit already, but what what were some of the main standout challenges that athletes were facing, like specifically? Was there any like common issues that were cropping up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the biggest ones um, has been sort of this emotional fatigue and stress. Um, I, I hear athletes all the time tell me that, you know, they woke up and felt super strained before a game. Um, maybe it was something that went on last night at home before their game. You know, maybe it's they're working a job on the side and things are stressful there. It's, it's like this emotional piece that kind of changes based on our environment around us and can be pretty influenced by stuff outside of the sport as well um, is a huge piece. Um but actually, when you look at it, it's one of the sort of ones where these, you know, when there's a sort of acute stressor, it's not, it's one of the easiest things to to sort of work on on the spot. So whereas physical fatigue, for example, you're going to, it's going to need a little bit of time, a little bit of, uh, you know, re- like time is one of the biggest factors. We can really significantly alleviate some of that emotional fatigue and cognitive fatigue in a short period. Um, utilizing some protocols that have existed for a long time but haven't been super accessible. And that's really what we've tried to do. So I'd say emotional strain is a big factor. And I've heard, you know, as I mentioned, pro athletes, pro football players come tell me they were feeling super stressed before a game, just sitting in the locker room, use one of our sessions targeted at alleviating that strain, emotional strain pre-game. And we're able to just get in the right mindset right focus, calm mindset to be able to go out and perform and have one of their best games, which is awesome because that's previously a piece where they would have, you know, not looked right on the pitch, not been able to perform at their highest capacity and actually limit removing that cap and allowing them to perform at their physical capacity is, is um, you know, a big part of what we want to do and have been able to do. I want to get into um, some of the details on what, athletes actually get from yourselves in a second but I just wanted to ask around when a player is going through that that stress state that emotional state when they wake up before performance whatever they're doing what's their knowledge been like on a, I know this is talking on a general scale now of when mm-hmm. you're speaking to them and, you, and obviously they end up getting something that you recommend for them to do what's been their previous knowledge and also approach to that has it just been a case of just sucking it up and getting on with it or if they tried things before or if they tried to put, put things in place that maybe haven't quite worked as well yeah i think it's a little bit of a, a mixture i think there's a big attitude of um that hopefully we're trying to to, to remove but kind of just suck it up because um you know i was talking to a team recently and they were saying um you know the emotional uh they they don't like sort of looking at the emotional uh or speaking to the emotional side of it because it feels like an excuse like you know that i was stressed and stuff like that but actually uh and they should just suck it up but actually it's one of the things that's going to limit us pretty significantly and yet we can fix pretty easily pretty significantly with a little bit of work uh, or at least alleviate to some extent um so so i think there is this attitude um across some uh, aspects of sport of just suck it up and just get on with it. Um, probably because of what I'm saying, that you know, there's not this kind of time that needs to happen. You know, you don't need, uh, it's not like the physical piece where, you know, there's there's this tangible uh, strain you can see and feel. Um, it's more this sort of feeling. Um, but ultimately impacts us with that sort of mind-body connection. Um, so yes, I think that's that's one aspect, and then I think there are you know 
people have tried other things um you know maybe trying meditation which isn't for everyone and is a practice it takes a you know a lot of time to to real, really get the benefits from um what we try and do is give give uh, athletes uh protocols focused on sort of high performance but also things that are going to be accessible on the spot and they don't have to you know train for you know meditation is a practice it's going to take weeks and weeks to get to a point where you're getting the real benefits from it we want to give people benefits on the spot that they can feel right away um so i think that's kind of a mixture um we, as part of what we're doing we're trying to sort of alleviate that time that kind of uh attitude of suck it up um and hopefully just you know create this um actually no actually this is something that's going to affect you and this is uh you know genuine but this this is a way you can support yourself and get in a better state to perform. I'm sure a lot of the listeners now will be intrigued in terms of what actually happens. So I thought it'd be great if you could maybe give a, a few different examples and you don't have to obviously name names or in sports or athletes or anything like that, but of when an athlete has been facing a challenge of some sort and what has, ha has actually taken place in terms of what were the steps that you put in place for that athlete at that time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So to give some background, the system is pretty automated. So it can, you know, it works uh, without sort of any massive intervention. Coaches can work with their athletes through it as well, but it can also just stand completely uh, software only. We basically provide the recommendations based on our algorithms, which are pretty in-depth. Um, so I've kind of got some anecdotes of where they've told me a few situations. Uh, one was a football player, one of the ones I mentioned, uh, basically feeling super stressed out before a game, just had an argument with uh, the uh, you know family member the night before, and that ultimately impacted how he was feeling the next day. Um, now, that's not a great place to be in. I'm sure we've all kind of felt that either you know, in our work or training or competition. And it's pretty um, consuming. Um, so we, we provide an intervention which featured some guided breathing protocols, um, some binaural beats, some self-talk and visualization strategies, really focused on removing that sort of, uh, or alleviating some of that strain and allowing him to stay calm and focused and ultimately go and perform and, heard awesome things about how that game actually turned out which was you know great to see um on average our athletes are dropping their stress by 70 percent in a couple of minutes they're feeling 30 percent more focused uh and uh 30 percent more ready for performance so really excited to see that sort of material change and we see that in their hrv and resting heart rate across the course of sessions too um another example is working with um an esports um player um so kind of different different environment but just shows how sort of flexible this is uh you know we've got athletes literally across every sport um or even outside of that um and, and uh you know this esports uh athlete was building towards a big competition a championship final um there's naturally a lot of mental fatigue that comes with playing on a screen for uh, a lot of time um and in the build-up to this was using our system to help unwind after sessions every evening, uh, trying to alleviate some of that mental fatigue to help him prepare in the best way. And then you use one of our sessions pre his uh, final um, and went and won the MVP for the competition. So really exciting uh, stuff uh, when you just kind of focus on that uh, mental VC. I uh, hear he had one of the best games of his, his career. So, you know, when you're able to get in that 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 sort of right mindset, get your state in all right, uh, where, you know, I was hearing a podcast with um, Andrew Huberman the other day talking about, you know, the ability to change your state. There's naturally a lot of stuff we go through in the, you know, in a day, you know, maybe you start off your day, uh, you know, in a, in a, you know, grabbing your coffee and you just want to be relaxed and you're going to work and, you know, you want to get in this more focused state and you're going to, uh training and you've got to pick up your arousal level a little bit and get the right sort of mindset to be able to 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 train and uh, or maybe you've got a game like there's a lot of different states that you have to change with the change um i mean you've got your family piece to um change between your day and if you can have a tool that supports that in a quick and easy way then it's you know game changing oh 
it's fascinating. I think it'd be great to maybe go into a few more details on some of those um, training pieces that you've mentioned in those circumstances. And obviously not to skip over the breathing part of it at all, but I think maybe that is one area that hopefully a lot of coaches have seen a lot about recently in terms of sort of breathing practices, even tying that in with some sort of meditation. We obviously had the podcast not that long ago, Brian McKenzie, who spoke about that as well. I was just about to mention, obviously, um, the human podcast, because there's so much stuff in there, isn't there, around this. But what really fascinated me yeah. was when you talked about that visualisation. Um, so when you had that player in that state, had that argument, obviously pent up frustration, stress. Can you give a few examples of what that would actually look like in terms of that vis- visualisation piece? Yeah, absolutely. And just to touch on the sort of breathing piece, obviously a huge, huge aspect. And we've got a you know massive library and just really focus it towards the goal to hopefully make it accessible. But yeah, on the, on the visualization piece, there's some of the examples. In that case, we really want to just give a cue that's going to get the athlete thinking in the right way. Um, hopefully this not only helps in the moment, but also trains that skill of being able to pick it pick up on it as part of a toolkit. So in that particular case, some of those strategies might be you know, asking them to think about what's most important to them that day and just keep the focus on that. Um, in another case, it might be, you know, walk through a successful performance from start to finish, create that sort of mental videotape. That's something that Michael Phelps uses a lot or used a lot um, and refers to a lot. Um, so that kind of walking through that whole process and that includes, you know, walking out from the changing room or locker room getting onto the pitch, you know, if it's an international game, doing a national anthem, whatever it might be, and then, you know, kick off, uh, you know, success of scoring goals, um, ultimately winning that game, like literally walking through a mental videotape from start to finish of a successful performance can kind of bring your focus into the right place to perform. And we just basically want to give that that cue and make it super accessible. Um uh, and we provide the right environment to, to work through that queue as well with some relaxing um, or <laughs> basically use a type of, we can probably dive into this a little bit more, but uh, a type of uh, music called, um, or audio uh, called binaural beats, which helps get your mind into sort of the right uh, state. Um, so creating that environment helps a lot, but then the queue, and we pick the right queue based on what they want to achieve and the state they're in. Um, is also super valuable. Let's let's pick that audio up in a second. But <laughs> just before we do, the, the other thing you mentioned um, around that, you obviously mentioned visual, visualization and the self-talk as well. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm intrigued by that as well. And just to tie on to that, how much of this is athlete-led in terms of like some of the things they're putting in place? Is it is it coming from them as well as you? Yeah, so for self-talk, we have this sort of pre-built library of... Uh, of uh, some some great um mantras from you know top athletes or even outside of that um but we also recognize that you know people have personal things that work for them so you can literally go in and customize them uh add create your own library of self-talk cues that work well with you um and experiment with a couple and that will basically bring those into your sessions um it's so like I've even had, um, you know, religious athletes come to me and say they put in sort of prayers as part of their self-talk. Um, so it just shows how sort of flexible that that is. But yeah, basically we've got this sort of wide uh, library, but then also you can add your own. Um, some of my favorites. Um, and and again, we tailor it to the right sort of state and goal. Um, common focus is a great one. Keep going, be strong um these have to work for the individual which is why we give the flexibility but those are some of sort of my favorites and just with that as well how many attempts or I suppose trials does it take for someone generally to find and I, i'm guessing that the, the, the um, approach is maybe going to change all the time but in terms of if if this is going to be very new for an athlete how many times mm-hmm. on average does it take for someone to actually find an approach that works yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I don't have sort of a hard and fast number on that, but we are sort of aiming to get people some benefit right away and then help them sort of refine that process. Um, part of the way we do that is we give 
um, some self-rated reports post-session. So before and after a session, we ask you to rank sort of uh, your subjective state and can show your subjective improvement over the course of that session. We can also track resting heart rate and heart rate variability during the course of that session. So basically, we can give you some reporting on how uh, how much benefit you got from a session. And ultimately, that feeds back into, uh, you know, what is the right session for you uh, and what are the right protocols for you. So um, that's sort of a big part of, um, you know, helping with that process. Um, yeah, don't have a hard and fast number, but um, we definitely sort of recognize that different things work for different people. Um, and we want to sort of fine tune around the individual. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. I wasn't expecting the it takes three attempts or whatever. But it's just interesting <laughs> to to hear what your experience has been on it. Let let's go into that audio section of it now because that's fascinating. How does that work? Yeah, it's really uh, cool. It's you know it's a technique that people uh, may have heard of in some capacity. Uh, I've heard people, stories of people you know using them on CDs you know, uh, connected to headphones. You have to use headphones. I'll explain it a little bit more as to why. Uh, but, you know, it's basically been this protocol that's existed for not ages, but a while, but it hasn't been super accessible, at least, you know, in this kind of format. So um, that's something we've tried to do. Um, we work with a PhD audio engineer to uh, create it, the, these poems and layer them on top of uh, relaxing music as well. So it's... Uh, it, like a you know aside from the actual beat itself it's a, a relaxing experience but the binaural beat is fascinating essentially we play a slightly different frequency in each ear and that might be as you know slight as um 200 hertz in one ear and 202 hertz in the other ear and what that's going to do is create a third tone uh, your brain creates a third tone essentially which is a gap between the two the two uh the two beats or two frequencies in that case that would be two hertz and through this process of brain entrainment starts to mimic that frequency and people familiar with brain activity will be familiar that a two hertz wave is a delta wave kind of the wave you'd experience during deep sleep um so getting your brain working within that right activity frequency can really have a massive effect at sort of um, changing state and getting you into a state you want to achieve. So we've done, we've got two hertz wave, we kind of mimic this deep sleep feeling. Um, four and six hertz, again, sort of focus on the recovery piece, slightly different based on sort of cognitive and physical recovery. And then the 13 hertz wave is incredibly powerful for focus and performance. So you might want to have that in the background whilst you're training, or even if you're working on as well as uh, training or competing, you could use it whilst you're uh, impassively whilst you're doing work to help focus, kind of get into that flow state. Um, and uh, yeah, incredibly powerful. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how we've, how we've done that. That's cool. No, I love it. I wanted to ask about the actual like software now, because you've, you've talked about some of the, um, some of the work that the athlete would receive, some of the information that they would receive and gone into detail on that. But how does it actually work? Is it run through an app? Like, how does it actually work physically for the for each athlete? Yeah, so we have an athlete platform, which is an app, um, and they can access it through their phone. And then we also have a coach's platform, which is this web dashboard um, or web platform. Um, in terms of, the, yeah, the athlete platform, they'd essentially access it through their app. A typical day would be, uh, we tried to make it as time efficient as possible. Um, excuse me. Um, but a typical day would be, um, you know, maybe even five to 10 minutes of use. Um, that would involve a 90 second readiness assessment each morning to give an understanding of their state. And then a couple, two to four minute sessions throughout the day based on what they need and what they, they want to achieve. And we try and build the sort of smart notification system to help, uh, trigger them at the right moment and give them the tools that they need. Um, so yeah, a few different, um, uh, yeah, essentially just a couple of minutes, uh, you know, every now and then for other day, um, uh, which hopefully is, makes it super accessible for the time crunch athlete. We know what it's like. Um, 
And then from the coaches piece as well, based on the team, we can kind of build a dashboard, uh, helping you, uh, you know, track your athletes' readiness, but then also giving you those tools uh, to come in and recommend solutions. So not just stopping at the monitoring piece, but also looking at what are the solutions and basically allowing you to share them with your athlete. Um, so yeah, this kind of combination between web dashboard and app, hopefully just makes it this sort of toolkit at their fingertips. Uh, that's the aim. And in terms of compliance of athletes, I'm sure when they're looking towards this, it's something that they're bought into at that time. But how does compliance get monitored? Do they have to feed back into the app when they've, they've carried out each task? Yes, yeah, so we, we uh, can sort of show that through a, um, through a dashboard. Uh, so the, the coach would basically see a report of their athletes. Um, we've also built a ton of tools to support that and support that habit forming journey. Um, on you know, there's a ton of sort of uh, uh, features built around that sort of habit forming process from the athlete side, but then also from the coach's side, um, we've given tools to basically send a quick reminder at sort of the top of the button to do this uh, session, um, and also auto reminders. Yeah, you know, if you're a coach and you know, you want to take a look at your athlete's readiness at 8 a.m. each morning. You could set a auto reminder for, you know, maybe 7.55. And that would mean that if someone hadn't done it by that point, for whatever reason, they'd be uh, pinged so that they'd sort of get a quick reminder and say, hey, do this uh, before 8. And that hopefully means that when you come in at 8, you've got everyone's ready to go about you and having to sort of, uh, think about it too much and chase it up on anyone so we wanted to sort of build the tools that support time crunch coaches and time crunched athletes and uh, making sure we get that sort of uh, quick compliance and uh, tools around that is super important for that it seems like you got a lot of factors covered and obviously a lot of the challenges that <laughs> athletes are facing it, 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 there's a lot of um factors in place isn't there to tackle those but what's the future as well like is there anything that you feel like athletes are facing where it probably the system needs improving and them supporting on a little bit more yeah absolutely um you know one of the awesome parts of software is we can keep evolving and keep keep uh keep pushing it out and uh you know that's a big point people sign up on a subscription and they get unlimited updates and that's kind of a big part of what we do, we want to keep improving the product for athletes and make sure it's the best we can. Um, one key thing I'm really keen to look at is uh, cycle tracking for females, uh, female athletes, and how that then factors in and how we can support that. Um, yeah, that's just a huge, huge, uh, I think, problem that we can uh, hopefully support at some point. Um, with you know, already starting looking at that. Um, but that's a, a be a little bit down before we release that um and yeah a couple other pieces we're just releasing on neuro buttons um which is essentially a hardware piece that allow you to train your mind whilst you're training your body it's a really unique experience you could get on the bike and be hitting power targets through the platform whilst also training your mind which is a pretty fun experience uh, you can also do it on runs or on you know training pitch or whatever it might be um but yeah, just a sort of ergonomic, accessible way to train your mind whilst you're training your body. Um, so really excited about that. Um, and then also keen to keep evolving uh, how we work with teams, um, potentially building sort of training plans as, as a part of that where people could build towards uh, sort of a really specific goal or, you know, if, if it, you know, maybe it's a cup final they're training towards we can sort of work on tapering around that and peaking around a uh, certain point. So a lot of stuff keep evolving, um, but those are just um, some ideas um, uh, that we're working on or have released. I'll see you in a second, Ed, if we've missed anything out. I think we've pretty much covered everything there, but I think the one thing we maybe didn't is you referenced it before about integrating with hardware. Yeah. Um, if people are wondering what that actually means, like what, what systems that are already in place does that integrate with? Yeah, you know, that's a big, you know, we recognize that athletes and teams probably have their own systems in place in terms of, uh, you know, the heart rate monitors they like using or things like that. 
So we don't want you to go out and buy one of ours. We, we just want to provide the software and allow you to connect with what we're, uh, you know, connect with our platform. So we've done a lot already. Um, all standard Bluetooth heart rate monitors, Aura rings, Garmin, um, Apple Health uh, as well. Uh, we can track workouts through some of those platforms too. Um, and again, we're sort of open to, to evolving that as well. So if you know, teams come to us and say we're actually using this platform, um, we're, we're pretty open to doing integrations in that capacity. So, you know, we want to provide the software that works with your existing tools. Um, we can make recommendations if you don't have uh, those as well. And it's also not an essential part. We, you know, you don't need to connect to the device. Um, so, but it just sort of adds to the to the uh, physical tracking. Um, so yeah, we we aim to connect with the tools you already have essentially. Brilliant. Well, Ed, if there is anything that you feel like we've left out, then please cover it. But if not, where can people go if we've got athletes listening that are like, "This sounds great. I want to get involved," or whether it's a coach at a team, where would you direct people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you are uh, looking to learn more, head to rewifitness.app and if you ha put slash FFF at the end, um, it will, uh, uh, in a part of a team, uh, we've arranged a sort of special package that we can work with you on. Um, if you're an athlete as well, just head to rewifitness.app and you'll be able to find uh, our app and download it. Um, you could get started for free today. Uh, um, we kind of get a free version as well as a uh, that gives you sort of a trial of a few features um and then a, a paid version which you can access um so yeah rewire fitness on app on socials we're at rewire fitness for the most part um and if anyone wants to chat with me or just has any questions or even just wants to you know uh, see some of our studies we've I've referenced today or or learn a little bit more um you can email me at ed at rewire.team brilliant uh, that was super. Loads of great information there. Obviously, it looks like a great resource for athletes and teams. So all the best going forward. Thanks, Ben. Really appreciate it. And uh, great to be on.